Hello, hello. JD Grosspitz here, lead singer and streaming talent of Malignant Bear. And we're here to do a mid-year channel review. So we started the channel uh, for Malignant Bear back in December of 2020. And right around the time of the winter solstice, that December. So now it's the summer solstice of 2021, which seemed the perfect opportunity to do a mid-year channel review and just sort of a six-month channel review. So I just wanted to talk about some of the some of the games that we've streamed, some of the content we've put out, and uh, cover some of the things that I've been playing off-stream as well, uh, for those who might be curious about that. Uh, I assure you I, I do other things outside of gaming, but uh, I'd be remiss not to mention the, the games that I've been playing, even if some of them didn't make the stream. So uh, we'll try to keep this pretty brief here. Just wanted to do kind of a quick little recap like this, because um, I figured it would be fun. So without any further ado, we'll jump on in. So, in no particular order, these are some of the highlights of the things that we've streamed. Uh, and first up, we have a short hike. And this was a very short and sweet uh, artsy kind of game uh, where you literally just hiked around a beautiful national park and met various creatures and interacted with them. Um, it was very fun and nice kind of palate cleanser for more serious games. I always like doing games like this, so this is an easy recommendation for people who enjoyed uh, playing games like this. And it's a short enough game that I believe I did all of the content in the whole stream, so it's, you know, again, nice, relaxing, and fun. Next up, we have Ori in the Blind Forest. Uh, this game was fantastic. Uh, we've played a lot of Metroidvanias on the channel, and this was one of them. And unfortunately, just due to the quality of all the ones that we've played, this was probably one of the weaker ones, which is saying something uh, given just how good this game was. Great visuals, uh, touching story, good soundtrack. My only major complaint with it was the sort of chase segments at the end of the temples, but otherwise, again, easy one to recommend. Uh, and it's older too, so it goes on sale all the time these days. So, Ori in the Blind Forest. Next up, uh, another of the Metroidvanias we played, um, and of course this, this screenshot, I'm sure lots of people will uh, remember this one, but uh, this was Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. Uh, I love the Shantae series, and full disclaimer, I have backed some of them on Kickstarter. I think WayForward does fantastic games. Um, but yeah, this, this was great. Uh, this was another one that was just kind of fun, short and sweet. It doesn't take itself too seriously if this screenshot is any indication. Uh, but the gameplay is very solid and enjoyable. So, Shantae and the Pirate's Curse, easy recommendation, fun stream to watch, um, and the whole series in general, I think, worth picking up and checking out. Next up, Yakuza Zero. Um, this one is, for those who watch the channel, this one might be kind of an odd entry because I didn't play very much of it on stream, and the streams of it were so all over the place. Um, both in terms of when they were scheduled and the quality of it. Uh, unfortunately, the PC port of this game just has some issues, mostly in the audio department. Um, I think I sort of have it working now. I've been playing more of it off stream. Uh, I absolutely love this game. Uh, I don't know if that came across very well on stream. This is, it's a tricky game to stream though, because it's so long and involved. Um, I'm 40 hours into it, and according to the completion gauge, I'm still less than 50% of the way through the game, so. Uh, this game is fantastic, though. The humor and writing and everything is right up my alley. Um, th it's been so fun just playing this off stream and just getting engrossed in it uh, and just dying with laughter at it. The gameplay is pretty fun. My biggest complaint with it, other than the audio issues, is the camera, sometimes in combat, is uh, terrible, um, but still. This game's great. Uh, the whole Yakuza series is, but this one especially, it gets you introduced to the characters and has a lot of the enhancements that the newer games have as well. It goes on sale all the time and it's dirt cheap, so easy recommendation of Yakuza Zero. Uh, next up, Doki Doki Literature Club. This is an interesting one because uh, us streaming this actually got the channel shadow banned for a little bit. Um, this game is not as kawaii as it looks. Of course, everybody, I think, knows that by now about this. It's also getting a, a re-release with some new content pretty soon. Uh, this is a visual novel, and it starts off innocently enough, 
as just sort of a dating sim, but quickly devolves into a meta-breaking psychological horror game, and it's it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I know lots of people like this because of the you know genre shift and the psychological horror, which I thought was good and, and well done. Um, the meta elements of it and what happens outside of the game itself, I think, is much more interesting. Uh, I will say that after I played this on stream, I went back and replayed it off stream to get the other endings, and this game is just great. Uh, I can't wait for the remaster of this. Uh, I don't know if we'll play that on stream just because of the worries about being shadow banned again, but uh, I will definitely be checking that one out uh, on my own time. Next up, Deedlet in Wonder Labyrinth. Um, this game was phenomenal. Uh, as I mentioned, we've played a lot of Metroidvanias on the channel. This was the best one. And that's saying something given the other ones that we've played this year. Uh, I have never played a game that is just so, so tight and simple in terms of its gameplay. Um, it's, it's very basic in terms of how it works, but it just, it worked so well. This game was so fluid and fun. Um, the art style was phenomenal. I love the pixel art. And of course, I'm a little biased, uh, having grown up watching and reading Record of Blood Us War. Uh, getting to revisit that series and these characters was great. Um, this is definitely one of the top three games I've played this year, um, and probably one of the top three games I've played in many years. And again, even if you aren't familiar with the source material, just the gameplay and the art style, I think, will propel this one ahead. Uh, it doesn't go on sale often. Um, but I think it's worth it even at full price. So, Record of Lotus War, Deedlet, and Wonder Labyrinth. Uh, next up, Duck Game. Uh, this was one of the band collaborations that we did. This one was just me and Constantine, one of our guitar players. And this one I put up here just because it was so fun and silly and over the top. Um, it's a shooter game, very frantic and fast-paced, where you play as ducks. And it's one shot, one kill for everybody. And it's just wacky and goofy. Uh, this is one of the games that I believe Adult Swim published. Um, all of their stuff has been sort of like this. It's very fun, fast paced. Um, it's, it's a shame that it's sort of dying out. Uh, we tried to get some randoms in with our games when we were playing this and didn't have a whole lot of luck. I think the most people we had in the match was three, maybe four, um, which kind of a letdown. Uh, it does have couch co-op though. So if you uh, happen to have some roommates or some family members or just, you know, live close to your friends, this would be a great one to pick up and just tear through. Uh, and it's simple enough. It's basically just moving, jumping, and shooting. That's it. I think anybody can get into this one and appreciate it. Uh, next up is one of our earliest streams. And this one was the Frog Detective series. Uh, just two games in the series. And I did them back to back in one stream. I absolutely loved them. Um, the humor of these games was again right up my alley, similar to Yakuza, but in a very different style. Yakuza is um, sort of over the top, uh, almost, I guess, soap opera-ish, uh, but very mature. Frog Detective is very, very silly. Um, it reminded me sort of of the humor you would get in something like Homestar Runner, for those who remember that. Um, it doesn't take itself too seriously. It's just fun and whimsical. I think it would be suitable for all ages. Both games were short, only about an hour long. Um, interesting little art style and all that. But yeah, Frog Detective. Uh, I think they're making a third one. If they are, we'll definitely be streaming that. So easy recommendation here as well. Next up is Hades. Uh, we streamed this actually over on Twitch and then rehosted the VODs on the YouTube channel. And this was also early on. Um, Everyone has just uh, praised this game as much as they can, and I will too. Uh, the gameplay in this was fantastic. The art design, the sound, especially the music, all amazing. Um, if you somehow haven't heard of this and haven't picked it up, do that. Uh, this is a great game. I've played more of it even off stream. It's, you know, a quick, fun uh, roguelite. And just, you know, again, there's, there's not enough good things to say about this. Um, I, there is some some difficulty with it for sure, and I think that might be what turns some people off of it. Uh, so I, I can see some people having complaints about that. That yeah, it does get kind of hard um, getting through to the end. Might take you a lot of attempts, 
but it's all fun and they're pretty short runs as well. So Hades, definite recommendation there. And here we have another collaboration. This was Hammer Watch. This was me, uh, Divi the drummer, and Constantine on guitar. And Hammer Watch, um, thumbnail doesn't say much about it, but it's basically Gauntlet Legends. Um, it's just very, very basic, very fun just to jump into and mess around with. Uh, this was a great game just to kind of get to talk to some of the other members of the band and have a good time in. There's a sequel to this as well. Um, it has a little bit more content and complexity, but it doesn't have multiplayer quite yet, so I believe they're still working on it. Um, whenever that's done, we'll probably check that out. But Hammer Watch was good and fun, um, if a little basic, but there's nothing wrong with that because it's definitely one of those games that's just made better by having your friends around. And Hat in Time. Uh, this was another sort of early one, and I absolutely love this. Even though I've played a ton of Metroidvanias on the channel and just in my day, um, I'm not a big fan of platformers, uh, but I, I still loved this. Um, platforming in this game just felt fantastic. Uh, the art style was good, the humor was, was cute and funny, um, the soundtrack was pretty good, it didn't overstay its welcome at all, and I especially loved uh, the DLC, the Nyakuza Metro, um, the cat-themed Yakuza um, underground sort of thing. The level design in that was perfect. Um, even from having played other platformers, again, I'm not I'm not keen on them, but I've played quite a few. Uh, I think that had some of the best level design I've ever seen in a platformer. Um, I don't know if we're going to get to see more out of this franchise, if it even is one. I hope we do, though, because it was absolutely amazing. So, hat in time. And another of the Metroidvanias that we played here is, of course, Hollow Knight. Um, I didn't get the good ending on stream. Uh, I did do it off stream, finally. It took a lot of trial and error to go through the White Palace. But uh, this was great. Um, even if it did, it did take a little longer than I would have liked. Uh, the art style, the combat, the sound design, the world design, all of it was stellar. My only complaint with this is it sort of overstayed its welcome. Um, and I do have to give some some ribbing to the, the devs here. Uh, you can claim that your game was not inspired by Dark Souls, but it totally was. Everybody knows it was. Quit lying about it. Uh, this is... It's 2D Metroidvania. It's Dark Souls, but with bugs. That's that's what it is. Um, it's great, but again, it's, it's a little on the long side. Um, and I'm, I'm still waiting for the sequel. I know everybody is, but hopefully we'll get Silk Song before too long. But... Either way, Hollow Knight, easy to recommend, um, even if it is a little bit older now. All right, so again, I just wanted to cover some of the things that we played on stream. Um, there's there's a good number more than that, uh, and some of those streams took quite a while. Obviously, Hollow Knight in particular, that was uh, nine or ten streams in the end there. Uh, but I also played a number of games off stream. So some of these did get videos, and I have them mentioned here. Of course, Kiryu, what, what am I doing with my life? I feel the same way when I thought about what I've played this year. But, uh, yeah, so some of these other titles. Obviously, Neo 2 um, put out both a stream of it and a video review of it. Uh, that is probably going to be my game of the year. I would be shocked if anything comes close to that, uh, or surpasses it, I should say. Uh, Deedlet comes quite close. That's That's my second choice there. Um, Neo 2 is just fantastic. I, I gush about it in the review. Uh, it's it's Dark Souls, but with the combat of Ninja Gaiden and the loot of Diablo. Uh, that's All of those things are 100% right up my alley. It is brutally difficult, but when you get into it, oh boy does it work and flow and feel oh so good. Uh, another game is uh, God Eater Resurrection. I'm playing through the entire God Eater series uh, for the first time, and I'm still working on Resurrection now. Uh, it's good, if uh, if a little dated. It's definitely, you know, a PC port of a PSP game, so it has some issues. Um, at its core, it's essentially just edgy anime Monster Hunter, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but I, I suspect that my main issue with it is going to be it might overstay its welcome. Uh, it's, it's enjoyable enough, you know, it's kind of mindless for now, but I suspect towards the end game I'm just going to kind of want to get on with it. But there's nothing wrong with that. 
but I, I think it is fun, um, and I'm looking forward to the later games in the series as well to see what they've changed up with it. And a very drastic turn from that is Pillars of Eternity. Uh, I've had this game in my backlog for quite a while and decided to finally jump into it after Obsidian announced late last year that they're working on an open-world uh, first-person RPG similar to the Elder Scrolls games, but set in the Pillars of Eternity universe. Um, Pillars 1 and 2 are isometric, old-school, uh, turn-based RPGs. Well, you can make them essentially turn-based, um, similar to Baldur's Gate. It's very good, um, very long, though. This it's, it's quite a complex game to get into, tons of reading and writing in it, um, so there's a reason why I didn't stream it. You know, just to just to get through the first little section of the game was about 12 hours, um, and it's not all fully voiced. The sequel is, the first one is not, so there would have been a lot of reading out loud and things, um, and I think in the end it's probably going to be, you know, a 60 plus hour game, so that's why I've been playing it off stream. It is very good though, um, and the world build building is quite good. I'm curious to see what the second one does, and then obviously lean into the uh, upcoming sequel as well. Next up we have Devil Slayer Roxasai. I put out a quick little video review of it. Um, it's very fun. It's a top-down uh, roguelite similar to uh, Binding of Isaac. Um, check out the video on that one. Uh, it's a Again, it's, it's very basic in what it does, but there's nothing wrong with that. It's fun. It's a good pick up and play for, you know, 15 minutes, still make some progress and feel good about it sort of game. It's hard not to like that. Another one that we put out a video on was Warriors All-Stars, um, Koei Tecmo's uh, Warriors series, uh, the Mushu games, um, very popular, very well known. Uh, except for this one, it's it's kind of an odd one out in the franchise because it came out around the same time as Warriors Arichi 4, um, which was by all accounts a better game with way more content, um, and not long before the newest uh, Dynasty Warriors, which was slammed for being pretty terrible. So this one sort of fell under the radar. It's, uh, it's fun enough for what it is. It's definitely a budget pickup. I wouldn't buy it at full price, but at, you know, $20 or less, uh, as, as I said in the video review of it, there's some fun to be had there for sure. Uh, it's mindless fun, but there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, next up is Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, Divi actually got that for me as a Christmas present, and it took me a little longer than I would have liked uh, to get through it. I did apologize to him for that. Um, it's good. Uh, I enjoyed it for sure. It's, uh, it's sort of a watered-down Sekiro wearing a Star Wars skin, which is interesting and fun. Um, my complaint with it is sort of the, the same complaint that I had with Sekiro, in that once you start fighting non-humanoid opponents, the intricacies of the combat just sort of fall apart. Um, and I think Sekiro did it better. But uh, it's for sure the the issue in Fallen Order that anytime you start finding anything non-standard, um, whatever whatever intricacies and fluidness the combat had just sort of stopped. Um, it's also very video gamey. Um, like for example, if you see you know a building and you need to get to the second floor of it, you can't take the stairs. Oh no, you have to climb around the building outside in a very predefined path. Um, it feels very antiquated in some of the things that it does, to the point where it sort of just got cumbersome to play towards the end. Uh, it's relatively short, and even on the hardest difficulty was pretty easy. Um, but I think, you know, if if you're not super into Star Wars or you're not willing to put up with some of the the video gameness of it, maybe give it a pass. Uh, next up is Metro Exodus. Um, I mentioned played Stalker not too long ago on stream, and I mentioned Metro was another potential that I thought about streaming that day, um, and I'm playing it off stream instead. Uh, it's very good. Uh, I love the Metro series. Again, it's made by the devs of the original Stalker games, so uh, atmosphere, uh, just out the wazoo. It's just, it feels very immersive and fun. Um, it's such a unique setting, too. It's very cool. Um, Gunplay is it's okay. Uh, it's nothing special. You're you're playing it to get sort of immersed in this very interesting world. Um, I'm still working on that one, but probably shouldn't take too long if it's anything like the other games. And last but not least, I know this one's going to be a little controversial, but uh, 
Genshin Impact. Uh, I mentioned last year that I was playing this, uh, this gacha game, um, and I still am. Uh, I think it's very fun. It's, you know, open world, very, very immersive and sort of lighthearted, similar to Breath of the Wild, where, you know, if you see something, you can go and explore and adventure and just have some fun with it. Uh, and that's what keeps me playing. Um, you can ignore the gotcha elements if you want and still get through the story, which is, it's okay. Um, some of the, some of the writing is better than others. Uh, the recent, you know, summer event that they're doing, uh, it's going on as I'm recording this actually, it's quite good. Um, there's some good writing and characterization in there for sure. And again, all of that you can experience just ignoring the gotcha element. So if you've been, you know, afraid of a game like that because it's a gotcha game, don't be. Um, again, it's free. Uh, I'd recommend the PC client though. It's uh, unless you want to melt your phone, but uh, you know I, th I think it's worth it, and that's why I wanted to toss it in here. But that is just some of the highlights of what we've done on the channel. Um, of course, quite a few quite a few karaoke releases. We're working on some more. We'll have more content going forward as well. But again, just wanted to put out a little mid-year channel review to commemorate the summer solstice, which is also coincidentally six months of Malignant Bear actually doing something with our YouTube channel. But anyway, uh, as always, we do hope you enjoy our content, and we appreciate your viewership and hope you'll stick around. And until next time, have a good one.